these pilots know how to fly a Hawk jet. Now they're about to be taught how to kill with it. For the first time in 25 years, our cameras have been following a group of trainees at RAF Valley as they strive to become combat pilots. Two of them are about to begin the last phase of their training. This is their final preparation for the front line. Failure at this stage is still a real threat. Congratulations on getting to 19 Squadron. You're probably less than a year away from your frontline squadron, and you're probably less than 18 months away from being combat ready. People that have left here just over a year ago were preparing to go out to the Gulf. We're looking for you to fly the aircraft confidently and aggressively. We cannot afford to send anyone to the front line that's going to need uh, to be carried. Rich Fawkes first flew a plane while he was still at school. Ever since, he's wanted to be a combat pilot. There's a lot to learn. Clearly, there's a lot to learn. I mean, they, they, they hit us with the information very quickly early on. So, I mean, the first briefing was straight into it. So, uh, we know that the curve is going to be quite steep. It's been Dave McBride's ambition since the age of nine. He's been an RAF navigator for 18 years, but at 38, still desperately wants to become a combat pilot. Still can't believe I'm here. Uh, Scrawny, the navigator, fairly experienced, and I mean, it's brilliant that it's happened, but I still have days where I sit back and go, wow. Um, and this is one of them. The Hawks are being prepared for the trainee pilot's first flight as part of 19 Squadron. When the students come to us, um, they have already learned to fly. They've already got their wings and they've proven that they can fly the aircraft. Our role is to introduce um, the frontline tactics and weapons. We are basically preparing them for the front line. Dave and Rich are about to fly Air Defence Mission 1. It's the first time they'll use their aircraft as a weapon. Right, looking for the range on the beam 2 and a half. You've seen the beam, the 2.5 to 5 comes and goes very They'll be quickly. taught some basic dogfighting techniques and how to shoot down an enemy aircraft at high speed. Or even way before then, I think I might get the nose on here. OK? So outside the turn circle, decreasing aspect, which means you end up looking more down his jet pipe. Think about what aspect you might be... It'll test their ability to fight tactically and think instinctively at high speed. Pickle the button and then start the count. How long does, does the uh, missile take to hit in the beam? Four seconds, yeah, absolutely. It happens very quickly, it doesn't give you a lot of time, so lots of anticipation. First time actually using the aircraft, rather than uh, learning how to fly the aircraft, how to land the aircraft, things like that. So this is the first time we're, we're actually sort of thinking aggressively about you know, shooting, the, shooting the bandit or you know, trying not to get, to get got ourselves. First go at air defence in the front seat. Been doing it for 17 years, sat in the back watching what's going on out the window, and now I've got to prove that uh, I can actually do what I've been watching people do for all those years. Dave and Rich have been paired together on 19 Squadron. They'll fly together in most of the sorties and tests, and each will need to learn how the other thinks. On this mission, they'll be doing air-to-air -air combat and will take it in turns to practice shooting each other down. Today, Rich is the enemy. The exercise will take place high above the clouds at over 20,000 feet. 
Dave's physical and mental capacity is tested to the limit. His instructor watches from the back seat. Everything that Dave says and does is recorded. Okay, okay. You ready to go? Yes, indeed. So if you have control, Dave. Uh, control. Set foul. I would turn, go. Okay. Now that's the bucket level for top now. Five out. It's a game of cat and mouse at over 500 miles an hour. Hey. It's not coming top, so cat. That's pretty good. Being range of two and a half, about two and a half now. No shot, unfortunately. Yeah. At last, Dave gets his man. If this was for real, Rich's hawk would be falling to the ground in flames. How's that? Cool, flying. Welcome to the world of air defense. <laughs> You don't need to go to the gym when you're doing this game, because <laughs> reading up there is quite sufficient, I think. Exhausting? Uh, it is, actually. It is, but there's the worst to come. There's um, AD3, there's <laughs> the one when you ought to come where it's the, all the defensive stuff, where you're looking over your shoulder, pulling maximum G, max performing the aeroplane for mm -hmm. however long, half an hour, 40 minutes, mm -hmm. and apparently that really is uh, a biggie. <laughs> RAF Valley has been training combat pilots for over 50 years. Only the elite make it through to 19 Squadron. Those joining are only too aware of its history, tradition and high expectations. If pilots fail to meet the high standards, they'll be out, chopped. It's scary just because it's uh, so much new to learn. You, you want to succeed, you don't want to, you don't want to come out looking bad. So uh, it's scary because of the pressure. It's quite interesting how, how much harder we do have to work over the side. Well, I'm, I'm finding anyway, I think some of the guys may be uh, finding otherwise. We expect them to work hard, and certainly uh, because they're getting ready for the front line, uh, we expect them to prepare themselves. We give them the information that they need, but it's up to them to make sure that they know it. We expect them to show them the, the correct amount of initiative. There's a lot more stuff to learn and uh, you have to be able to be able to take it in a lot quicker and sort of inwardly digest if you like so that you can perform when you're up in the air and you don't get a, a lot of time to sort of consolidate to think about it. You have to be able to be pretty much there, there or thereabouts first time. So uh, yeah, whereas you've got a, a bit more slack maybe over the other side, get here and uh, you know, the curve is definitely getting steeper. Dave has passed his first few sorties with little difficulty, but now he's preparing to fly the Air Defence 3. This is one of the most physically demanding flights a pilot will ever experience, and one where they will feel the full force of gravity. They're going to be looking over their shoulder all the time at uh, a bad guy who's trying to shoot them, um, and they're starting off from a very defensive position, so the bandit has a uh, opportunity straight from the beginning to try and get shots away. Yeah, quite nervous actually. <laughs> Not nervous about the actual content of the trip, but uh, nervous about the possibility of pulling a neck muscle because uh, this is the, the trip where people do occasionally. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's sort of sitting in the back of the mind. But as long as I get in, get my neck warmed up sufficiently, and then uh, hopefully be okay. But it's just one of those trips where it's high G. Obviously with a helmet on, uh, most of which is looking over your shoulder, but you've got to keep looking forwards 
checking your height and all that sort of thing, that your speed's correct for the manoeuvre you're trying to do. Mm and that you're not over g in the aircraft so of course you're having to move under g and back and if you're doing it under a few g it's fine mm. but once you're up at the top end the six to six to seven g then uh, it hurts <laughs> at seven g gravity is seven times greater than normal this means that dave's head will weigh seven times its usual weight just turning around to look behind will become physically exhausting Dave is going to be chased in this sortie by an experienced frontline pilot, which will add to the pressure. Dave knows he'll have to keep his wits about him to avoid being shot down. In the crushing turns, gravity squeezes Dave's lungs, squashes his stomach and pushes blood to his feet. Just looking outside for the enemy requires tremendous physical effort. But Dave must remain focused or lose the battle. Forty minutes later, the mission is over. Once I got into that crunch position in the second half of the trip, you know, really working hard, trying to get air in the lungs, and just ran out of energy on the very last one. Just trying to breathe, trying to breathe, trying to breathe. No, I just can't pull any more because there's not enough oxygen going to the muscles. So, uh, yeah, but he's uh, assured me it does get easier the more you do. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> and these boys don't look as if they've been working. <laughs> Right, I'm gonna go and get changed. <laughs> Dave is progressing well, but Rich has been finding the going rather tougher. His recent performances have been poor. Only the best survive at Valley, and the pilots are made well aware of what happens if they don't make the grade. Uh, unfortunately, I've talked to you about like the more negative sides of the course, which are the review and suspension procedures. If you have a snag on a, on a sortie, and everybody does, it'll be pretty much a straight refly. If that doesn't go very well, <laughs> then you may get into a um, flight commander review. Right. Uh, it's not uncommon either, and then we'll put a little bit of a package together, say two sorties. If that package goes badly, then we're down to um, squadron leader review, and that is an assessment. Right. Okay. Until you're sat in the shoes of the individuals going through the course, you have no that, understanding of the pressure that they feel on a daily basis. There are days when you wake up and wonder if it will be the last one that you'll have on the course because you perceive, either rightly or wrongly, that the axe is about to fall in your direction. Rich is watching the playback of his most recent flight. Air Defence 10. It didn't go well. Ultimately, he went up there and wasn't quite quick enough and sharp enough on, uh, on what was happening at the time. So, hopefully, a couple of days on the ground, I'll just go through it all again, speed it up in my head, and I'll get up there and know what I'm doing. So. Um, the reason it's not working is because we're going the same way as the fight. He failed the trip. The instructors of 19 Squadron discuss his performance and his future. OK, then, Mark, we're here to discuss uh, Rich Falk's performance in the AD phase uh, and how it's all gone a bit Pete Tong for him. We've got two aircraft, two friendly, myself and, uh, in fact, Dave McBride, who's, who's sort of the wingman. We've been working together in this phase with one bandit. And he got everything right in the brief. So on, on a magi board with, with sticky shapes saying, this is the picture of what happens here. He got it right every time. If you do it in the air, when he's got, you know, to fly the aircraft, think about his fuel and everything else, then at the moment, 
he won't he won't give you the correct answer. To a point where he'd make the wrong decision, change it incorrectly, and then change it again. Bits and pieces then to make it untidy. Fox 2's taken when the bandit and his wingman are in the same piece of sky, so you know possibility of uh, shooting his wingman down there. Really, because we haven't really been exhausted, have we? Jeez. But now he's not really enjoying himself, you know. He's not having a good time. It's gone that badly that he knows it's gone that badly as well. Okay. You know, you can get to a point where you could ask him his name and you might not get the right answer because the guy's just overloaded. Stop it. Two, Fox, two. As long as he's just sitting on the ground, which I'm trying to do now, and, uh, and go through it all sort of 100 times, then uh, it becomes sort of muscle memory sort of thing. For him, he needs to just think on his feet in the air and it will be make or break. He'll either click and his performance will improve or, or he'll flatline. They've come to a decision. Rich will have to refly his last three sorties. Dave is to remain his partner. The hope is that his experience will encourage Rich and pull him through. The next day, Rich is due to refly his air combat exercises, but the weather isn't favourable. Pilots have to get used to weather delays, but that doesn't make things any easier for Rich. If it doesn't clear, then Rich and Dave may not fly at all. The power base here is 2,000 feet. It's set up to uh, flat level 225. <laughs> it's official, there's too much high-level cloud for flying. That gives Rich more time to prepare, but it also means more time to worry. That's the best thing to do on a, on a bad weather day. <coughs> Sit down and get well ahead of the game. And, uh, Hopefully be uh, on top of it before we get there. So, uh, just keep working, because uh, once the good weather does come, you don't get time to really sit down and uh, consolidate all the stuff that you're trying to learn. The weather clears at last. But Rich has to put his sorties and anxieties to one side. RAF Valley is hosting its annual reception for local people on Anglesey. Whatever else is on their minds, the officers must attend and mingle. Yeah, you let yourself down a bit, or that's how you feel, but then... Most people, I think, do you feel a trip or two. As long as it be doesn't become a trend, I think. As long as you can not let it get you too down and jump back in the aircraft next time. A few days later, flying conditions are perfect and Rich has to prove that he really does have what it takes to become a combat pilot. It could be the last chance to prove himself. Sometimes uh, we have trainees who just can't get the pictures in the air combat. They don't have a 3D brain and they find it very difficult to see situations developing and react accordingly. We give them fairly advanced and complex sorties to try and learn, and some of the trainees just find that it becomes too much for them. They just get to um, a brick wall effectively, and they can't raise their game anymore.
has earned himself a reprieve. He's passed the sortie. Uh, the pressure was on, but I knew that I was. Well, I was fairly confident that I could do it because I knew that it was just a, a matter of sitting down and working it all out in my head before going and doing it again. And uh, the last few days you've had to work quite closely with Dave. How yeah. far has the uh, camaraderie helped? Oh, excellently, yeah. I mean, obviously we get on very well. We've been you know, all working together, same squadron for the last year or so now. And uh, yeah, that's been awesome. And uh, obviously he knows huge amounts about air defence because he's been around for about 15 years doing it. <laughs> so yeah, sure this next phase is going to be even more on top of what's going on. It's properly into his old domain. So. <laughs> Rich is finally allowed to move on to the next stage of his training, but he knows things won't get any easier. To ensure he's fully prepared for what's ahead, he goes to the Hawk simulator for his next exercise before doing it for real. His mission, to track down an enemy aircraft that has invaded Britain's virtual airspace. This will be shoot to kill. control will keep him updated on the location, direction and speed of the enemy intruder. Tiger 1, uh, one target, 27043 miles, heading now 060, 15,000 feet, mission engage. This simulator is the only one of its kind in Britain and cost £18 million to build. The graphics are very realistic. The one major difference between this and doing it for real is the absence of the G-force, which can scramble the brain. Now Rich has to prove he can fly the mission for real. It looks as though Rich has reached his limits. Once again, the mission was beyond him. He's given one final chance. He's to fly with a squadron commander in what's known by the pilots as the chop ride. Rich has been having a few problems. We've got to the point where I need to fly an assessment sortie with him. Um, and effectively, uh, that's because he's been given some remedial training. He has improved um, on some sorties, but then we've had a bit of a regression in some aspects as well. He has been told that he needs to pass this sortie to continue. He doesn't need to pull out a fantastic performance. All I'm looking for is the core standard that we would expect at this stage of training. It's make or break. This could well be the end of Rich's dream of becoming a combat pilot. Rich is up in the air for almost an hour. Every move he makes, every word he utters is scrutinized. His entire future rests on this performance. He's putting a brave face on it, but things don't look good for Rich.
In accordance with tradition at RAF Ali, an axe is drawn above his head on the course photograph. His childhood dreams are over. He's failed. He's been chopped. It's a hard thing for, for us to have to, to do to someone, to basically take away their dream. Um, however, we have to do it because it's um, for their own safety, for the safety of others, uh, and also uh, because we need people on the front line who can actually do the job. Uh, but he seemed to understand, he seemed to accept, and, and a couple of times in the air, I think he sort of realised that this was probably beyond him. So he took it very well. The deeper into the AD phase I got, the more I realised that I probably wasn't the Red Baron. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But hey, there you go. They tried. They threw a few extra trips at me and extra tuition experts, and I still couldn't put it out of the bag. So there we go. Gave my best. Let's uh, move on. Let's see what else happens. Come on. Drip a pink drink. Golden. The pressure all the way through, you, you never think it's going to be you, and then all of a sudden he's finished, and that's it. Uh, so a massive pressure relief, stress relief for him, in that the pressure he was under has stopped, but of course now he's wondering what's next. After you sort of fell a certain number of trips, you start to think, well, I don't know, is this for me? Am I, am I actually cut out for it? Am I going to make it through or not? And uh, I guess inevitably, you, although I, I never stopped wanting to get to the end, I suppose you, you do start to struggle to believe in yourself and believe that you can actually make it through. After leaving Valley, Rich is sent to train as an RAF transport pilot. He will never fire a missile or drop a bomb. His job will be to supply the pilots on the front line who do make it as combat pilots. Yeah, I mean, hopefully I'll be uh, deep in the operations of a squadron, doing uh, something that's worthy for the country and worthy for the Air Force and helping out my friends on the front line and the, and the fast jets. So. In the final episode of Combat Pilot, Dave gets to drop bombs on a beach in West Wales. Pilots get to grips with low-level flying in the wilderness of Canada. And we'll find out how many of the pilots make it onto the front line. And you can find out more about the making of the programme and the recruits at bbc.co.uk slash combat pilot.